Hey everybody, I'm Mama Baird and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you what I received from my local food pantry this week. If you're new to the channel, my name is Carolina and I live in Missoula, Montana. On my channel, I like to show you what I receive from my local food bank. I also like to do pantry cooking and product reviews on my channel. So if that's the kind of content you're into, I hope you'd consider subscribing. I'd love to have you come join me on my channel. I also have a Facebook group, Mama Baird's Homestead. Really great group. We do a lot of recipe sharing and just overall support. So I would love to have you come join me over on Facebook as well. So let's get in here and I'll show you what I received from my local food bank and my plans on how I'm going to use it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the bread. Lots of bread. Each family was allowed two loaves, so I got two of these buttermilk loaves. They make really great sandwiches, so I like to have those. And then they had unlimited amounts of bagels, so I grabbed two everythings and one plain. And then they had some of these Italian dressing bags here that are just like for a single salad. Um, these would make great marinades and each family was allowed 10 of these, so I grabbed that. And then they had a little bit of extra where they had non-food items, so there's a, which are usually hygiene items. And I was able to grab this melatonin-free bedtime gummies, so these would be good to give to the kids to help sure, make sure they get a good night's sleep. Oh, peanut butter's from this morning, not from this one. And then in the extra aisle, I was able to grab a thing of Ritz crackers. These remind me of my childhood. So I grabbed one of these to add to the kids' snacks. They either have snacks after school or sometimes they like to take their lunch to the school. They don't always like to get the school lunch. So this would be a good lunch item as well. And then they had Ritz crackers there as well, which I love Ritz crackers on top of um, casseroles or to put peanut butter and jelly on and make like a little peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Oh, they're so good. Each family was allowed two half gallons of 1% milk. And then for the meat choice, I got two pounds of hamburger, but it's already shaped into patties. So these are quarter pound patties each. Now they did have a thing in the frozen section that I passed and I'm kind of questioning if I should have not. And it was a big case of bagel dough, like, um, like 96 balls of bagel dough. Now I didn't get in there and look cause it was sealed and I didn't want to open it unless I was going to get it but I'm believing that it's probably pre-round, already shaped as a bagel, and then you just have to thaw it, proof it, and then cook it. But I was like, ah, I don't know. I, I ended up going with the burgers, but that is something. Would you have gotten that, or would you have gotten the burgers? Because in order to get that, you have to have room for like a 40 pound case of frozen bread in a freezer and then have the knowledge of how to prepare the bread from that. And bagels, you gotta usually add water or you boil them first or you cook them in a steam oven, which you can create with a regular oven, but you just gotta, you know, you gotta know how to do that. So is that something that you feel comfortable like you would have gotten? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you would have gotten that or if you would have gone with the burgers. And then in the extra produce area, they had a big bag of parsley. I love it when I get this parsley. I'm going to go ahead and dehydrate this using my oven. So that's definitely one way that you can preserve herbs if you get a lot of them. And then we were allowed a soda per family member. So I got three of these root beers. Husband snagged one last night because I technically went to the food bank yesterday. And then I got two Diet Dr. Peppers. And then for our dessert choice, we got double chocolate muffins from Costco. These are fantastic. These are my favorite, chocolate, chocolate chip, or you can call it double chocolate. And they're the ones with the chunks. I definitely think that chocolate chunks belong in chocolate chip cookies too. Like use the big chunks. Mmm, chocolate is a girl's best friend, mm-hmm. And now for the produce, we were allowed a produce bag full for a family of four or higher. So I got the last two apples that they had there. These look really good, the good looking apples. Lots of jalapenos. They always seem to have lots whoop, of jalapenos. So I grabbed a handful of them, two zucchinis, one onion, and then three oranges. These oranges look really good. Give them a rinse. I bet they're nice and juicy. They smell fresh. And then they also had a bag of halos or clementines for every family. They had lots of those. And then I grabbed two bunches of green onions because I like having green onions in hand, but I never seem to have them on hand. So I think I'm going to dehydrate these as well with the parsley. So that way I can have some to add into like chicken salad or egg salad. I like the addition of green onion in there. 
And that's all that I got on my haul this week. But don't go anywhere because we are gonna be cooking up some tasty grub. So don't you click that mouse. I'll be right back. All right, everybody, we are back and we are gonna be making some apple zucchini muffins. I think that sounds really good and it's a good way of utilizing both the zucchini and the apples because we got two of each. Now I am also going to be making a burger. I'm gonna be making a brunch burger. It's gonna have bacon, one of those beef patties. I'm gonna fry an egg. We're gonna put it on a bagel. It's gonna be delicious, but we're gonna start with the muffins. We're gonna get those in the oven and then we'll bring out my griddle here and then we'll cook up a burger for us. Now what I have here is one zucchini ended up being one cup. I did grate this and then I squeezed all the juice out of it to make sure it was as dry as possible. And one zucchini ended up perfectly being one cup. And then I used both apples. The larger one I grated as well, which is what is down here. And then the smaller one, I chopped off most of the skin and I diced the rest of it. Pretty small dice. And that's what's gonna be for our chunks in our apple muffins. So that's how I got all of this. And now we're going to put together our dry goods. All right, I am just following, following this recipe that I got online. I'm sure it'll be good. We're going to do, this did originally make 15 muffins, but now this should make 30. All right, four and a half cups of flour, and then one and a half cups of brown sugar, one teaspoon of baking soda. Now this may seem like a lot of ingredients, but you really need each one of these in baking. And once you have them all collected, it's really not that big of a deal, not too tedious. So don't get overwhelmed if you see lots of ingredients. And then here's a tablespoon of baking powder. Both of those are going to help the muffins rise. Oh, all right, one teaspoon of salt. I have some pumpkin pie spice here because it usually calls for cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, and pumpkin spice has a lot of that. So I'm just going to add two teaspoons of this. You could also just do regular cinnamon if you like that. And that's it for the dry goods. Let's get this mixed up. All right, the dry goods are mixed. Let's do the wet ingredients now. So I need two cups of buttermilk. I think I roughly have in here. A little over, that's fine. And then half a cup of applesauce. I have one of the kids' cinnamon applesauce pouches here. This is what I'm going to use. This kind of just cuts down on how much oil you need. But it still does call for two tablespoons. I'm going to use olive oil here, that's what I got on my counter. It's kind of a mild one, so it won't put too much flavor in here. This just really also helps with the moisture. We're gonna add two eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla. You could also just do, capful is about one teaspoon. And then we're going to mix this up. All right, and then we're going to combine. We don't want to over mix. Pretty thick. Let's add in our zucchinis and our apples. We can also add nuts in here. Muffin batter usually is pretty thick. So you can put this in little pans, like muffins, make little mini muffins. You could do a loaf, you can make a cake, apple zucchini cake. And then just make an icing for it as well. Oh, I think that looks really good. All right, so let's just sit while we figure out what kind of pan we're gonna put this in. All right, I have picked my pan. It's this cute little bug pan. I actually bought this when I was in college going to pastry school. There was a William Sonoma in the mall and I had bought this wanting to someday use it for my kids, thinking this would be super fun to do. And I don't know, it's funny how even in college I was planning on being a mom, you know, and I bought this for him and here we are 15 years later with kids making fun treats for him. So. That's how long I've been holding on to it. 
I'm gonna use a scoop for this. One thing I have learned about this pan is you definitely wanna spray it really well because it's a pain in the butt to try and get this out if it sticks in like the butt there or the head here or something, you know. You do wanna leave room for it to rise. All right, those are covered. Now I have some sanding sugar I'm gonna put it on the top. Now normally this would work great for normal muffins. I'm probably gonna flip this over and present it on the top side, but that's okay. It'll still give it a nice crunch even if it's you know not necessarily on the top top of the presentation wise, if that makes sense. You can also mix this with a little bit of cinnamon and just do regular cinnamon sugar on top as well. All right, so let's get this baked. I'm gonna do 12 minutes and then we'll check it. All right guys, these are out. I also used this muffin pan to do some. So I, these ended up cooking for about 25. Oh, that's cute. Turn, turn, clean them out. Now this is still a little warm. It's probably, it might have been able to bake a little longer. But it firmed up some. Oh, that one stuck a little bit. Looks good though. Oh, yeah, there's a ladybug. It's so cute. See, and here's a bee. Pretty cute. This was at Williams Sonoma. I don't know if they still have this or not. It's not too bad. I'll have this soak a little bit. Well, I'd say these turned out pretty darn cute. And then a crunchy top. I'll see if I can find this pan and have it linked below if you're interested in checking it out. Any fun pan works. So we're gonna let these cool and then we'll put them in a container and then we're gonna whip up a burger. I went ahead and sliced up half an onion, super thin, as well as one jalapeno. And I'm gonna grill these to put on top of our burger. I have my Vever flat top here and I'm going to spray a little olive oil spray on it to make sure that it's nice and non-stick. And then I'm going to put my bagel down. I have a weight here that's gonna press it down and that's gonna make sure that it kind of coats all of it and gets it nice and toasty. This will keep it from getting soggy. And then I'm going to cook some thick cut smoked bacon here. This is really gonna help with the burger, plus it's gonna help season up that grill by adding some bacon flavor to it. So I'm gonna get that down, and once again, I'm gonna use my presses to make sure that they are nice and straight. And then we're going to give these a flip and get this bacon all cooked and off the grill. This bacon will also make sure that the grill is seasoned nice, so whenever we're cooking our burgers, as well as when we're going to fry our egg, we don't have to worry about any kind of stickage going on. And now I have my burgers down. I'm gonna cook four at a time, and I have some Kinder's lemon pepper is the seasoning of choice I'm gonna be using. I just kind of went through my spice drawer and I just picked different seasonings, whatever sounds good or whatever I need to get used up. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these a flip. You can see there's a nice caramelization on that side of that burger there where it's nice and crispy. But we're gonna let this cook a little more. I like my burger medium, but I tend to cook it more medium well for the rest of the family. And then while these are almost done, I'm going to throw the onions and the jalapeno on the side and get that sauteing. I do wish that I would have raised my grill up a bit in the back and then all that grease would have drained forward into the grease trap so it wouldn't have been pooling in the back like that. But lessons learned and that's how we know what we can do and fix for next time. So I'm going to put some of the peppers and onions on top of one burger and then the rest are for the kids. So they're not going to worry about putting peppers and onions on theirs. We're going to put Swiss cheese on top because that happens to be what I have in the house. Cheese can usually melt in under 30 seconds to a minute, so take that into consideration when you're putting it on top of it. But as it continues to cook, it'll melt as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off. I have husband and I one made, and I put some tomato slices on my bagel, and then I also have mayonnaise on there. Now with these eggs, this is a big one, so I'm thinking this might be a twin. So let's break it open and see. Yep, sure enough, there's twins in there. So some of the eggs, I don't know. I don't know how many of you guys see twins in store-bought eggs, but I get twins like this a lot in natural farm fresh eggs so that's kind of interesting um, and the poor lady who gave this one I did notice that my flat top was a little dry so I went ahead and sprayed some olive oil spray on there I did wish I have some bacon grease kind of pulled to the side because that would have been good to put down there as well 
I don't want to cook this too much because I do like a bit of a runny yolk, but I also don't want to make sure all that white is cooked. So just a couple of seconds on each side and it is good to go. And there my burger is all set. Wow. I cut mine in half because there's no way I'm going to be able to get all that in my mouth. Bagel makes it pretty tall, but let's take a bite. Wow. Well, that's good. Very messy to eat though, so I'm not going to eat a lot of it on camera. Definitely glad that I have that egg on there. I love a fried egg sandwich. What about you guys? Well, I got to finish up all these burgers, but thanks for coming along and seeing what I got at my local food bank and how I used it to feed my family. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time on Mama Birds.